That modern temperatures are unprecedented is perhaps the most widely reported and widely accepted claim concerning climate change. However, a close look at peer-reviewed climate science papers and data, including those of the IPCC, shows the claim to be a myth. This video dispels that myth when it is shown that the global average temperature for this most modern period is cooler than at least 4,000 years of the Holocene temperature history. Hence, current temperatures simply cannot be regarded as unprecedented or unusual in any way. There is therefore no need for carbon markets. Yet this subject is a fundamental part of the Davos agenda that is taking place in January 2021 and which leads up to the COP26 climate change agenda of November 2021. There are many issues throughout the world that urgently need to be resolved, including the worldwide deaths of 15,000 children and 800 women each day, mostly from preventable or treatable causes. Focusing on a carbon market is not required and is wasteful of limited sources of finance, effort and skill. This cartoon from a few years ago encapsulates the problem the world is facing. There are many issues to be tackled, but a disproportionate amount of money is being spent on climate change. And as the money gets spent, it attracts ever greater numbers of vultures looking to make a profit at the expense of more worthwhile causes. A JP Morgan economist Yes, an economist warns that the climate crisis is a threat to the human race and the term global heating has been coined. But global heating is based on a myth. The myth is that we are currently experiencing unprecedented record warmth. The current NOAA global warming website features this statement. Only by adding the human-caused increase in greenhouse gas concentrations are the models able to explain the unprecedented warmth we are currently experiencing. This claim is commonly treated as a truism. But current global temperatures are in fact cooler than around 4,000 years of the Holocene and they are the same as around 5,000 years of the Holocene. Those incredibly long periods might shock you into disbelief, but we only need to spend a little time comparing modern temperatures to those of the past to fully verify those statements. To properly conduct the comparison, we need to select relevant time periods and impeccable data sources. To avoid accusations of cherry picking, the periods used for comparison will be the very same as those specified in the NOAA 2019 report. 1880 to 2019 1901 to 2000, the 20th century, 1951 to 1980, and a period given prominence in the January 15 news conference, 1979 to 2019. This period is important because it is the period covered by the new ERA5 dataset. ERA-5 provides hourly estimates of a large number of atmospheric, land and oceanic climate variables. The data cover the Earth on a 30 kilometer grid. It is therefore especially useful to compare to this period. These are our time periods for comparison. 
We will now select our data sources. For global anomaly data during the modern record keeping period, the NOAA data will be employed. Hardcrypt 4 will be used, but only for the period 1850 to 1900. For data covering global average temperature for the past 11,300 years, this landmark study by Marcotte et al. will be employed. The study came about as a result of suggestions that recent warming is unprecedented, at least over the past 1,500 years. The market study provides a broader perspective by reconstructing regional and global temperature anomalies for the past 11,300 years from 73 globally distributed records. The study employed different methodologies and produced a set of different but similar outcomes. This chart shows most of these methods. You can see there is broad agreement, but the chart is a little messy. For clarity, we therefore selected two methods. The standard 10 lat grid and the standard 5x5 five five grid. This appears as the optimum, so it is to this we will refer in the comparisons. We now begin a series of comparisons to determine whether modern temperatures really are unprecedented. The first period for comparison is 1880 to 2019. The average anomaly for that period is minus 0 0.07 degrees Celsius. It is represented by the black dotted line. We are looking for any periods warmer than that. As can be seen, the average anomaly for 1880 to 2019 was below the average for the period 9000 BCE to 200 CE. We thus make our first conclusion that the global mean average temperature for the period 1880 to 2019 was cooler than the 9,200 year period, 9,000 BCE to 200 CE. Move to the next period, the 20th century. The average anomaly for 1901 to 2000 is minus 0 0.13 degrees Celsius. On examination, the entire period, 9,200 BCE, to 1160 CE, that's 10,360 years, was warmer than the 20th century. To paraphrase, the 20th century was cooler than the 10,360 year period from 9,200 BCE right up to 1,160 CE. We will now assess 1951 to 1980. The average anomaly for 1951 to 1980 is minus 0 0.1 degree Celsius. This is the base anomaly period used by NASA GISS, yet it is cooler than the period 8660 BCE to 1120 CE. That's almost 10,000 years. We come to the final period for comparison. The most recent period, 1979 to 2019. The period covered by the ERA-5 dataset. The average anomaly for 1979 to 2019 is 0 0.38 degrees Celsius. For this period, we will conduct two analyses. First, how much of the Holocene was at the same global mean temperature as 1979 to 2019? We set the search to equal 0 0.38 degrees Celsius. In fact, the period from 8100 BCE to 2900 BCE 
was at that mean global anomaly. The global mean annual temperature, therefore, for the period 1979 to 2019, was the same as that covering 5,200 years of the Holocene. 5,200 years. It doesn't seem credible. Just wait a few minutes and this fact will be verified from an unlikely source. Now we will see how much of the Holocene was warmer than the global mean temperature, 1979 to 2019. So we set the search to equal 0 0.39 degrees Celsius. There are two periods meeting that criterion. The first is 6,160 BCE to 3,000 BCE. The second is 7,720 BCE to 6,660 BCE. So, concluding the global mean annual temperature for the period 1979 to 2019 was cooler than a total of 4,220 years of the Holocene. Again, this is scarcely believable. It completely flies in the face of so many climate crisis statements. There will therefore be those who are sceptical of these conclusions. And of course, we too require verification. So let's verify these conclusions. We turn to the unlikely source. The IPCC, in its 2013 report, it referred to the very same market study we have been using. The reference was a little difficult to find. It was tucked away in section 5.5.1.1. A case of burying bad news, perhaps. It states that according to the market study, the global mean annual temperatures around 8 to 6,000 years ago were about 0 0.7 degrees Celsius higher than for pre-industrial conditions. Now, if this statement is correct, then all conclusions reached in this video are correct too. We will proceed to verify. We apply the statement to the Markov data. The average anomaly for pre-industrial conditions, defined by the IPCC as 1852-1900, is minus 0 0.31 degrees Celsius. The 2,000-year period referred to by the IPCC is approximately 6,000 BCE to 4,000 BCE. The average anomaly for that period is 0 0.39 degrees Celsius. So, adding 0 0.39 to 0 0.31, the IPCC statement is confirmed. 6000 BCE to 4000 BCE was 0 0.7 degrees Celsius, higher than for pre-industrial conditions. Now, as well as verifying the IPCC statement, we have also implicitly verified Statement 5 as well, because it is based on the same average anomaly of 0 0.39 degrees Celsius. So we can add an IPCC endorsement to Statement 5, and it follows to all preceding statements. The summary provided by the Marcotte study itself is also revealing. The study concludes early Holocene 10,000 to 5,000 years ago, warmth, is followed by 0 0.7 degrees Celsius cooling, culminating in the coolest temperatures of the Holocene during the Little Ice Age about 200 years ago. It is worth pausing to digest that statement. It was only 200 years ago that saw 
the coldest period of the entire Holocene, 11,300 years. Even further, the report also concludes that the decadal mean global temperature of the early 20th century, that's 1900 to 1909, was cooler than greater than 95% of the Holocene. Does that fact gel with the climate crisis claims? Just look, we are just a bit warmer than a time that was cooler than greater than 95% of the Holocene. And in fact, it looks more like 100% to me. I assume the report is referring to the time the Holocene recently emerged from the last glacial period. At this point, we declare QED. The claim that we are currently experiencing unprecedented record warmth has been shown to be false by a large margin. In fact, current global temperatures, 1979 to 2019, are cooler than around 4,220 years of the Holocene. And the fact that modern humans during the first agricultural or Neolithic revolution were enjoying the same or higher temperatures for a period of over 5,000 years is perhaps the most revealing statistic of all. The peer-reviewed scientific evidence shows that there is no requirement for carbon markets. Carbon markets are a solution to a mythical problem. While there are many real problems to solve.